People's Church Online, we are so glad that you have joined us. This is going to be an incredible day, and so I hope you're ready to worship with us today. It wasn't for nothing that you shed your blood. to the way I People's Church Online. We've already begun this gathering with an amazing time of worship. But before we jump back in, there's a few things you should know. So now is a great time to grab your Bible, your notebook, your coffee if you haven't already. And whatever platform you're watching from, we want you to know that there are pastors in the chat sections waiting to talk and pray with you. So go ahead right now and tell us where you're watching from and how many people are joining with you today. If you haven't downloaded our app on the iOS App Store or the Google Play Store, just search People's Church Fresno. Our app is a great way to watch live, catch up on previous messages, send a prayer request, and maintain your giving. If you're watching us on Facebook, like this page and share this video. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to keep up to date with everything we're sharing. And as always, you can contact us through email at info at peopleschurch.org or by calling the main office at 559-298-8001 or by simply going to the website peopleschurch.org. 
Again, thank you for joining us today as we continue our time of worship.
that's never ending. Today you may feel like you have used up the love of God. That you've gone so far that his love can't reach you anymore. I'm here to tell you today that God's love is greater than any mistake you have made. Anything that you've been walking through, his love is greater. Today, I just want to invite you and encourage you to open up your heart to Jesus Christ today. He is waiting for you. You know, he's never left. Maybe you've walked away from your faith and you've pursued other things ahead of God, but he is still right where he was. You haven't, you haven't gone so far that he can't reach you today. And so even in this moment, whether it's in your home, in your living room, we serve a God who is able to save. And I want you to just open up your heart today. Maybe it's saying this prayer that, God, today I'm tired of doing it on my own and I want to follow you. I tried my own way and it doesn't work. I need to follow after you. And it's simply just in your own words saying, Jesus, I come to you today. I say yes to you. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your love. And I ask you to come and live in me. I want a relationship with you. I want to walk with you. That love that constantly, continually pursues you. The reckless love of God. Because he is willing to leave the 99 and go after the one. Maybe you're that one. But today's your day that you say yes to Jesus. And whether it's right now in, if you're watching through our website, if you're watching on YouTube, live, if you're watching on Facebook live, you can just write in the chat. You can just fill out, I want to accept Christ. You can also go to peopleschurch.org forward slash next. peopleschurch.org slash next. And there you can fill out a, a card just saying, I need prayer, or maybe I've decided to follow Jesus. Today can be your day that you can see change and experience the love of God in a way that you never have before. You're gonna hear in just a moment about in the message that we're choosing joy. And today's your day to choose joy because it's your day to choose Jesus. We thank him for his love today. Hey, People Church, thank you so much for joining us today. Hasn't it already been such an amazing time of worship? We're super excited about Pastor Brad's message here in just a few minutes. You're gonna love it, so make sure you get your Bible and your notebook. But I wanted to let you know about a few things that are still happening around here at People's Church. Even though we're not here in person, gathering together, things are still happening. Um, you may have noticed if you've driven past the property in the past few days that the Believe campaign is still in action. Beams are going up and the property looks different almost every single day. So we wanted to give you a short clip of a few things that are happening with the Believe campaign. about what's continuing to happen through I Love My City and our food distribution program. 
We have served well over 100,000 people as of this week, so thank you so much for your generosity. We wanted to give you a short clip of just one of the ladies that we've been able to serve, but is also serving with us now. So take a minute to look at what Jen has to say. Absolutely amazing to see their response to it all. They're so thankful, um, the gratitude that they have, uh, just to be able to see one another, you know, from the community, me being from the community, and to see the faces come through and the smile that it brings, um, and to them just be so gracious and taking what it is that they're taking. Um, they say thank you multiple times while they're in the line, so it's just super nice, and it's uh, very helpful and beneficial to not only myself, but to our community as well. Isn't it so exciting to hear about how a simple meal can make such a huge impact in these communities? We have done over 100,000 meals, as I've already said, and we just want you to know that one night of serving dinner in our community, because we're serving Monday through Friday, one night costs $10,000 to feed all of these people. So we are so excited about being able to feed our community, but we know that that doesn't happen for free. It's about $1.50 a person to feed just one person a healthy, well-rounded meal because we wanna make sure that they're eating a good meal. So as we transition into this time of tithe and offering, we just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for your generosity because none of what is happening around People's Church and being able to keep the lights on, being able to feed people, having the Believe campaign continue, that's because of your faithfulness and your obedience to the tithe and offering. So as we move into a time of tithe and offering, the tithe is just the first 10% of whatever you earn. So. If you got $100 this week, the first 10 of that belongs to the Lord. And then anything above and beyond that is an offering, is generosity. And we love being an obedient and a generous people here at People's Church. So as we transition into this time of worship, I would encourage you to take a step of faith, take a step to be bold and be obedient and be generous in your tithe and offering today. God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley.
Yes, I will. Well, People's Church, it's great to be with you today. Thank you so much for taking time to tune in and to participate in all that's going on um, with People's Church. Wonderful time of worship we've already had. And now I want to talk to you as we go back into this joy series, Choosing Joy. Uh, I actually had the privilege of launching the series back in February, February 9th. And I went back and watched that message just to kind of get my mind around it uh, to prepare and be ready for, for this as we get back into this series. And it was interesting because in that time, we kind of launched it with some basic premises. Now think, this is February 9th, just a little over a couple months ago. And we talked about three specific truths. There's three truths about happiness. Number one, we said, was everyone wants to be happy. We, we all want to be happy. That, that's a basic truth. Number two, everyone around, everyone around us is trying to make us happy, whether that is Taco Bell and McDonald's or whoever saying, come here, if you buy our burrito, you buy our taco, you buy our burger, whatever it may be, you'll be happy. Whether that's you know Weight Watchers saying, after you've eaten there, come back over to us and then we'll make you happy and skinny again. Whatever it is, everybody's trying to make us happy. The car, the mall, the every, Everybody's trying to make us happy. And the third truth about happiness that we talked about then, just think about this a couple months ago, is almost no one seems to be happy. And as I was watching that message, as I said, to kind of get my mind around what we were going into here as we launch back into this, I thought, wow, that, that, that's almost kind of prophetic that we talked about that a couple months ago and how everybody wants to be happy. Everybody's trying to make us happy, but nobody seems to be happy. That, that just feels like almost exactly where we're at and in society here, here in our faith family and all over the world. And so as we get back into this now series that Pastor Dale will continue in the weeks to come of joy, choosing joy, and it's, a, it's from Paul, and it's a letter to the church at Philippi, but the differences between joy and happiness. So we're not talking about choosing happiness, we're talking about choosing <clears throat> joy. And sometimes you're maybe not happy, but you can be filled with joy. Now, Paul is writing this letter. We're going to find ourselves at the end of chapter one. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Philippians chapter one. Um, and we're going to find ourselves just in the last few verses in 27 and 28 of this passage of scripture. But it's an incredible passage of scripture and the context is very important. Paul is, is, is writing this letter, but he's writing it from jail, this terrible jail. If you have time, obviously a lot of us have time to do some study, you can Google the, the, the jail or the jails that Paul were in and you can see some of these things. This terrible jail, this miserable jail. Some, some writers believe it might have been one of the worst prisons or worst jails that ever existed, definitely in that era. And so he's writing from there and he's writing to the church in Philippi. Now, this is important to understand as well. The church in Philippi is really struggling. They're not doing great. There's, there's grumbling, there's complaining, there's, there's frustrations, there's backbiting. There's a lot of things going on in the church of Philippi. So the context of this letter is very important to us. You have Paul writing from jail, from prison, in this miserable environment filled with, with human waste and there's no food and the only food is food that's brought in by other people and all, just a miserable experience. And he's writing to this church in Philippi and the church in Philippi is having a lot of struggles and frustrations. And in the middle of this is kind of the context that Paul is writing. And in some contexts, I think that for us, as so many people are recalibrating in this season of life that we're in, they're, they're, they're thinking about how they handle things, how they move through things, how we deal with quarantines, how we deal with family, how we deal with work, how we deal with finances, how we deal with our faith, all of these different things. Paul's letter is extremely, extremely important, and dare I say, just very, very prophetic to exactly what we're living through today. So I want to talk specifically about three things uh, that he references here. So, uh, in, and again, uh, chapter one of the book of Philippians, verses 27 and 28. And the first thing is this, Paul says, as he's writing to them, he says this, number one, conduct yourself in a worthy manner. Conduct yourself. If you take your Bibles or you, you look at the scripture, it says this, Chapter 27, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. I want, I want to just kind of 
land there for a moment so we can kind of think about that and process that. It says, whatever happens. Now, again, Paul's in prison. These people are struggling, backbiting, fighting, difficulties going on. Whatever happens, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. I think this is an extremely important thing for us to get our minds around as we're talking about joy. Joy is a choice. That's why the, 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 the title of this series is Choose Joy. You're choosing joy. There's times when maybe you don't feel joy. That's not, we're not talking about your feelings here. We're talking about your choices. And as we choose joy, one of the things that's important to make sure that we have as benchmarks of what does that look like is this concept here that the Apostle Paul is writing to us, anointed by the Holy Spirit from the hand of God. The first thing that is said is this. Make sure that you handle yourself, make sure that you present yourself in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's important for us in these days, it's important for us in our lives to make sure that we get our minds around this and we practice this. The Bible's very, very clear. It talks about a lot of things, but it talks about things like, as a man thinketh, so is he. As a person thinks, so they act, if you want to kind of make it in that kind of gender neutral concept. As a person thinks, as you and I think, sitting right where you're sitting, right where you're at right now, right where I'm at right now, as we think, so are we. Our, our first step is our thoughts, and then our actions come out of that. So if our first thoughts are holy, and they're good, and they're worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ, our actions are then going to manifest those things. If our thoughts are things that are not worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ, are not honoring of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then our actions are going to start to manifest themselves in a way that are not honoring or worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's important for us to get our mind around this concept and commit to this concept of even how we think. I'm, I'm 50 years old, have not lived through, you know, major you know, World War II's and Vietnam's and things like that that took place. I have lived through 9-11. Um, I have lived through the Y2K, which turned out to be nothing, but was a big deal, and everybody thought every plane was going to fall out of the sky. Uh, I can remember exactly where I was when 9-11 took place, and, you know, some of these things. And, 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 and yet, in my life, that this, is, this is kind of the weirdest time I've ever lived through. One of the things that happens as we go through this is, is your mind gives you the possibility, your mind gives you the opportunity as you begin to say, hey, I want to conduct myself in a worthy of the gospel of Christ, in a, in a lifestyle that's worthy of the gospel of Christ. One of the ways you do that is you begin to hold captive the thoughts of your mind. What are the things you're processing? What are the things you're pondering? What are the things that you are just consumed with in your mind as you go through these days? I watch the news. I'll, I'll watch a snippet in the news every day. I like to keep up on what's going on. But I can't tell you how many people God's given me the opportunity to pray with who are dealing with major anxiety right now. And one of the common things is they're saying, you know, I'm watching the news six, seven, eight hours a day. I'm watching the news, one person said 10, 12 hours a day. And I just said, stop. I'm not saying don't watch the news, but if you're pumping that into your brain 12, 12 hours a day, it, it, it literally is a recipe for anxiety. Take some time, read the word, go for a walk, begin to think on things. The Bible says, think on these things that are holy and good and pure and right. And what begins to happen is out of you begin to flow streams of goodness, streams of blessing, streams of Jesus Christ. And so it's important for us to get that concept. The, the reality is this, and I, wa I want you to really get this, even write this down. You cannot live a life worthy of the gospel until you think a life worthy of the gospel. You can't live a life worthy of the gospel, until you think a life, holding captives the thoughts of my mind. I will think, I, I will process, I will, I will pray, and I will hold captive these thoughts. And as you control the thoughts of your mind, what begins to happen? You begin to live a life that's completely different. So it's important for us to understand that. The second thing is this, and the second thing is this. I love how he says this, and I admit my personality is this kind of personality, but the next thing he says is this, stand strong. Stand strong. So number one, live a life worthy. Live a life worthy. Number two, stand strong. Stand strong. In verse 28, just the first portion of verse 28, it says this. Without being frightened in any way. Without being frightened in any way. So here's what I want you to do. Paul sang to the church in Philippi and through the Holy Spirit to all of us around the world today. So number one, make sure that you live a life worthy. Number two, stand strong. 
Make sure that you stand strong without being frightened in any way. The reports coming in and out from all over the place, all the fear and the fear and the fear, and I'm not minimizing that in any way, shape, or form. I'm not minimizing you that are watching this right now that are struggling with fear and with anxiety. I am not minimizing that. I truly am not. But the reality is, as Christ followers, something should begin to well up inside of us as the Holy Spirit begins to work in and through us, as we begin to process and think and read the Word. You know, one of the things that makes it the easiest for me, so to speak, to stand strong is because I don't sit a lot. I'm moving, I'm doing something, and, 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 I, and I'm praying, or I'm, I'm working, or I'm calling someone to encourage someone, whatever it may be. Some of you, the thought that you just kind of stand up, I'm not saying go out. If you're in a situation where you need to be quarantined, be quarantined. That's not the point. If you're in a situation where you, 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 you need to stay away from certain things, stay away from those things. In no way are, are, are we or am I saying to you, don't, don't follow the rules and the laws of the land. Having said that, there are so many things we can do to represent Jesus Christ, and we can stand strong in these days, and we can be voices of faith, we can be voices of confidence, we can be voices of strength, not a continual voice of fear. So what does Paul say? Hey, stand strong. I'm not implying breaking laws or, being, uh, or not being wise. Let me say that again. I'm not implying breaking laws or not being wise. Hear me, but let's also remember that running around in fear and spewing fear is no less harmful to the kingdom than being unwise is harmful to people's health. I want you to hear me say that again. I'm not implying, I'm not implying breaking laws or not being wise. But let's also remember that running around in fear and spewing fear is no less harmful to the kingdom than being unwise is harmful to people's health. So it's important for us to, to kind of get that in, 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 in our minds and our hearts. Um, one of my favorite uh, missionaries happens to be a friend of mine, Joe Gordon. And I, I watched a message by, by him here previously this week. And it was on a video thing that he kind of sent out. And it's about 28, 29 minutes long. It was just wonderful. And I, I watched the message. And after watching the message, I sent it to all the staff, a bunch of my friends. And just, you got to watch this. Sent it to my family. And I'm not the kind of guy that sends that stuff out. But one of the lines that he had in there, um, and here's Joe, this missionary. He's been around the world, front line for the gospel. And kind of thought to myself, somebody that I should probably listen to in this time because some of the things we're even going through and pandemic and different situations like that, Joe's lived in in Laos and India and other places. And one of his lines was this. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to wash your hands. Then I want you to wash someone's feet. Then wash your hands again. And, and we're hearing a lot about washing hands and I agree with that completely. Uh, we're hearing a lot about being safe. Agree with that completely. Uh, all of those things. But in this season, one of the things that you're going to find that causes you to have joy is as you begin to engage. The Bible says very clearly that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. So many people have turned that around and said, hey, if we put the gates up, hell can't get in. That's not what the scripture says. What the scripture is saying is that the gates of hell can't keep us out. Can't keep us out. I honestly have been here in this community of Fresno for about six years. I have never been more excited for people's church or the cause of Christ than today. Why? Because we're choosing joy and we're choosing to represent in a way that's worthy of the calling of Christ. And secondly, we're not running around in fear. We're standing firm. We're standing firm. The third thing today is this. The third thing today is this. Believers... Christ followers should be shaping the narrative. We should be shaping the narrative. We should be shaping the story. We should be telling the story. Verse 28 goes on to say, and has this line that I want us to, to really kind of get. And it said this, this will be a sign to them. This is a sign to them. So what the, what's the Apostle Paul saying? You, you, you make sure that you live a life that is worthy. You, you, you live a life that's worthy of the calling of Christ that is on you. You stand firm. You don't run around in, in, in fear. And then what begins to happen outside of that is now it becomes a sign. 
It becomes a sign that, that we're different. It becomes a sign that there's something inside of us that's different. We're not, we're, we, don't, we don't manifest the same fear. I, I in no way have a death wish or have a death wish for you. I believe that God is the healer. I, I, I do. Having said that, the Bible says very clearly that we're all appointed once to die. We're, we're all gonna die and we're all gonna stand before Jesus someday. It's appointed onto all of us. We all know that. That's not morbid. We all know it. The issue is, is what do we do with this life? And, and I refuse personally to be someone who, who spends all this time, you know, in, you know, cowering, so to speak, and struggling. I want to stand firm, and then I want to advance the gospel in any possible way that God gives us the opportunity to do so. And so I think this is important for us to understand that how we act and are acting in this time will speak louder than our words in the months and years to come. How we are acting as a people's church faith family and how you and I are acting as Christ followers. When our family sees us, when our neighbors see us, when our coworkers see us, how we are acting today will speak so much louder than the things we say in the months and years to come. There will be a point, there will be a day that, that all this quarantine will be done. God forbid, but there always seems to be some new problem five and 10 and 20 years from now. And, and, and people kind of forget and go on. You know what's gonna happen? They're not gonna forget. They're not gonna forget how you acted in a time of crisis. They're not gonna forget. They're not gonna wonder. You know, people's church, let me just look into your eyes, so to speak, right where you're at right now. Thank God the Believe campaign continues even as we speak. The, the, the beams are going up, more cements being laid. This children's center and lobby is gonna happen. You know what? The community doesn't care about that as much as they care about what we're doing in this moment as we feed people, as we are Christ's hands extended. Is that taking anything away from the Believe campaign? No. But why are we building buildings so that when the harvest comes, when the harvest comes and families and children are saved, what are we doing right now? We're sowing seeds into the harvest as the Bible commands us to do this unto the least of these. So you know what's exciting to me about all that's taking place is I'm proud to be part of a church that when this pandemic hit, we have worked to follow every governing ordinance, everyone. We ceased Sunday gatherings in person immediately, and we went online. So, so I'm proud. I'm proud to be part of a church that when this pandemic hit, we have worked to follow every government, or government ordinance, and we ceased gatherings in person and went online. But that isn't where we stopped. That's where we started. Uh, that was following the government ordinances. And well, a lot of people might go, oh, you know, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? People's church rallied under some phenomenal leadership, obviously first and foremost led by Pastor Dale. And, and then people began to begin engaged. And let me, just, let me just brag on you, People's Church, for a little bit. We immediately mobilized teams of people and have personally called, our pastors have personally called every home in the church. That's almost 9,000 homes, not people, 9,000 homes. So all of that is done, and now, literally this week, they started calling everybody again. We have expanded to six sites around the neediest portions of our community and have now fed around or over 100,000 hot meals. It's five nights a week in six different areas of the neediest parts of this, our city. Some people have said, well, why isn't that happening on People's Church campus? Because this isn't one of the neediest parts of the city. We're going to the neediest parts of the city. And so, so we're there five nights a week, now over 100,000 hot meals. We have distributed almost 1,400 meals that each feed four or five uh, people for Easter. So, so that, that's already done. We have sorted and distributed almost 10,000 books to children. We're organizing a blood drive. You'll hear more about that. We have distributed and in many cases delivered hundreds of bags of groceries. So people are shut in, they're sick, and, and we have people that deliver groceries around this town. Uh, this is one of the things that's most exciting in some sense is we have a group of elderly ladies here at the church. And by elderly, I mean nothing more than some birth certificate concept of, of age. I don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean old because these people are young, young thinkers, aggressive, wonderful people that happen to have a birth certificate that makes their age a little bit older. Well, they, they can't leave their, their, their homes. They can't go and be engaged, but they want to be engaged so bad. So what has happened is they have started making masks for different nursing home communities around this, this, this town, 
and, and we're delivering these masks that our ladies are making. So we're dropping off the material at their house. Susie Rogers, the women's ministries department underneath Pastor Joni is doing all this work and getting all of that to these ladies, picking them up, and then we're distributing these masks. So a lot of times you'll see at our feeding programs or things like that, you'll see people in these homemade masks. Those are made by these ladies who can't tangibly be there helping, but they're saying, God, what can I do in my environment? And we're making hundreds and hundreds of masks to for staff at nursing homes, for, for meal preparations and delivery, and all of these things. So all of this started happening. And this is just the public activity. Why? Because it's one thing to say we believe Jesus is the answer. It's another to be giving a sign, showing people that Jesus is the answer. It's one thing for us to say Jesus is the answer. It's another thing for Jesus to be the answer. Um... I hesitate even giving this story because there are just dozens and hundreds of people working so much harder than I am even out of this church, this faith family. Uh, but earlier today, we got a call from someone and they were really distraught and they needed some groceries. The problem is they had just been told that they, are, they had been tested positive for the coronavirus. And to my knowledge, not part of our faith family or congregation and they were just distraught, their families were distraught, they were all being quarantined and, and such. And so uh, there was a little, okay, who's gonna take these groceries to them? And I said, I'll do it. So I drove over and took these groceries to it, called her on the way there, because she didn't want us to come in the house or obviously, or even touch the doorknobs or things, so we're just leaving it on the porch. Talked to her for a moment, and, um, and talking to her for a moment, and I know what I'm about to say is breaking even some rules, but I talked to her for a moment, just, you know, could just feel the struggle in her voice and the the, the pain in that family going through this. So I have these bags of groceries from People's Church and, you know, and, and but I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm an emotional guy. So I think, you know, man, oh, so if this is my daughter. If, you know, this is somebody's daughter with kids and whatever. And so I pulled a $50 bill out of my wallet and I just stuck it in the bag. Never said anything. But because I had called her when I had dropped off the food, she called me back and she was crying. And said, I said, hey, you know, don't want this to be awkward, but I make sure your kids don't grab it or something. But there's a $50 and she's crying. So that's why I called you. You have no idea. And she started going to some of her family story and she started talking about these things. I had the opportunity to pray with her. This was just earlier today. Here's the reality, People's Church. Here's the reality, faith family. Here's the reality, Christ follower that is looking at this right now. I'm not asking you to do everything but you can do something. I'm not asking you to be part of everything. None of us can do that. But play your role. What I can tell you is your role is not fear. The Bible's clear. God, 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 is, God isn't bringing fear. You know what he's bringing? He's bringing joy. And in this season we're in right now, the harvest has never been more plentiful. This isn't a season where we as people's church, and I pray you, uh, we're not going, oh, how do we do it? How do we make it? How do we just keep the doors open? This is a season where we're going, the best days are to come, and God is giving us an opportunity to represent him like we never had before. So now looking into your home, looking into your living room or your office, your iPad, your TV, your phone, your computer, whatever it may be, to the degree that I can, I am looking at you what is the Holy Spirit saying to you through, through this passage of Scripture, through the Apostle Paul to you today, simply saying, hey, live a life worthy of the calling. Live a life. Sit up straight. Number two, stand firm. Don't be afraid. Stand firm. Jesus is on your side. He is the great conqueror. He is the yes and the amen. He is the alpha. He is the omega. Jesus is on your side. Stand up. Stand firm in Christ. And number three, how are you shaping the narrative, narrative in your family, in your community? How are people around you going, wow, yeah, this is difficult, but when I talk to them, when I talk to Sue, when I talk to Bob, when I talk to, to whoever it may be sitting right there, when I talk to them, man, my, my faith was lifted. My, 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 my confidence was, was, was brought up. My, my excitement, I haven't felt happy or excited, but man, I talk to them, why? That's the Holy Spirit working and living inside of you. Stand up, be firm, don't be afraid, and shape the narrative. That's what Paul's talking to us to do today. So, um, as we get ready to close in a moment, 
Chris is gonna be coming and she's gonna just kind of take you through some next steps. But I just want the privilege to pray with you before she comes. Uh, so if you're comfortable with it, even right where you are, just bow your head, close your eyes. If you're driving, keep your head up and look out the window. But everybody else, if you'd bow your head and close your eyes, I just wanna pray with you quickly. Dear Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that we get to live in a time such as this. I'm not happy with the pandemic or the virus or the things that are happening, but Lord, I am filled with joy knowing that your hand is on us. And so because of that, Lord, I pray for me and I pray for my friends that we would live a life worthy of the calling, worthy of the calling of Christ Jesus. Lord, that we would stand up, that we would stand firm. We would not be people of fear. We'd be people of faith. And Lord, in all of this, we would begin to shape the narrative with our actions, our deeds, our love, our prayer, our words. Lord, that what would bubble out of us, whether they talk to us, look at our social media, listen to us on the phone, interact with us in different places, even if it's a grocery store, whatever it may be, Lord, let what comes out of us be confidence, faith, and belief that Jesus Christ is the way, the one true God. We love you, Jesus. We trust in you. And because of that, we have joy. Amen. God bless. Wasn't that such an amazing message by Pastor Brad? I am going to be thinking about that for at least this week, but probably a lot longer because there were some really great points in there. But one of them that really stood out to me was that simple phrase by missionary Joe Gordon where he said, wash your hands, wash someone's feet, and then wash your hands again. And then right after that, Pastor Brad said, we'll have joy when we engage with what's happening around us. And so today as we close our gathering, I just wanna encourage you to be listening to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is moving and He is continuing to speak right now. So it could be something as simple as writing a letter to a friend that you know needs some encouragement this week or calling someone that you know needs prayer. The move of God does not have to be complicated. The Holy Spirit can work through the simplest act of our obedience. But let's stand strong today, like Pastor Brad told us to do, because he is doing amazing things in our community. And let's be a part of that redemptive story. So today, I can't think of a better way for you to make the next step in your journey than to saying yes to Jesus for the very first time. So if that is something that you would like to do, we want to say congratulations. We're so excited for you. But right here below where I'm talking, you'll see a, a website link that just says next at the end of it. There are pastors that are ready to pray with you that can answer any questions that you might have about what it means to follow Jesus. Or if you're just new to People's Church that maybe you've hopped on for the first time today, there's a place where you can click to get some information about who we are and we would love to connect with you later on this week. We love you so much, People's Church. We're so excited about what God is doing. Let's choose joy together this week.